da 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 It's me birthday, I'm 25 years old, not f***ing 35, so shove that up your ass. And I'm here at work, dressed up like an absolute numpty. Here are all the WTF moments from WWE Smackdown Live. The insider Byron Saxton needs to have his nickname changed immediately to the absolute f***ing bullshit because the shit he came out with about Kevin Owens, quite frankly, isn't f***ing true. Kevin Owens didn't f***ing barricade himself in the WWE locker room last week till 3 a.m. in the morning. If he did do that, he would have been stuck in that bastard locker room until the very next morning when the people that were working there on the night of SmackDown Live last week came back in the morning to open the doors again. Why? Oh yeah, here's why. Every f you will have gone home if I've learned anything from WCPW. Yes, I know. It's a smaller set, but we have a smaller crew. Take down at shows takes roughly two hours. And with the millions of people working for SmackDown Live every bastard week, their set and ring are virtual pop-up tents. You just go, whoop, they're there, and whoop, they've gone. Nobody's going to be there a full four hours after 2 -0 Live has been finished. A KO, if he did barricade himself in the bastard locker room, Byron, you bullshitting bastard, would have been stuck there all bloody night because no one would have been there. <laughs> JBL claims that a massive big boot from KO to the face of AJ Styles will be giving AJ Styles athlete's foot in the mouth. What the f*** are you talking about, John? He's wearing a shoe, you knob. As we all know, athlete's foot does not penetrate the rubber of a soul like Kurt Angle Seaman penetrates the rubber at the end of a Johnny. You know, we all know that referees are made of paper. Metaphorically. But it's f***ing interesting to know how they are. Literally. Lighter than one piece of plain A motherfucking four. As we all saw with our own two eyes, Kevin Owens didn't get anywhere near to clocking Mike Kyoto upside the head, but the mere breeze caused by Kyoto's fist swinging through the air sent Mike flying like a bit of bastard paper that got caught in a jet engine, then shot out the f***ing back. I'd pop by the refing man. I'd pop by the refing man. And blind in one eye like Kevin that pie. I'm Popeye the Raving Man. Fucking hell, Mike Kyoto does not know the difference between his left eye and his right eye. He gets clocked upside the head in his left eye. The commentators even tell us that. But he goes on to sell and then gets his right eye checked backstage. What's up with that? I mean, it's fair to say that ref bump is clutching at more straws than this bastard video is. Ha ha ha, but it's my birthday. Let us enjoy myself. Ha <laughs> ha, you have a roster. Full of referees, but Shane McMahon... Isn't he just the best at everything? Is seen as the best choice to referee the AJ Styles and Kevin Owens rematch rematch at SummerSlam 2017. WWE, why hire referees in the first f***ing place if Shane McMahon... Isn't he just the f***ing best? ...is the better option. I know Shane was an actual referee back in the day, but f***ing hell, he isn't Jesus Christ himself. Despite being a middle-aged man, Shane McMahon can go hold for hold with AJ Styles, strike for strike with The Undertaker, when he falls out with Bastard helicopter, he's not rattled one bit. WWE, you're pushing this f***er far too hard on all of your storylines, which is causing me to feel sorry for Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns looks like kid bastard Hawkins compared to how we see Shane McMahon these days, yet we still f***ing love Shane McMahon. What does that mean? a bit more? Tony Chimmel there, closely linked to a demonic rapist. Get over here! Ow! It's John O'Clock, motherfucker! <laughs> This time we have JBL calling Mike and Maria Canellis the modern day Tory and Billy. Now immediately, depending on your age, what springs to your mind here is Tory Wilson and Billy Kidman, but whenever JBL references Billy Kidman on air, he always calls him Billy for some reason, I don't know why, so this can only mean one thing. Back when JBL was WWE Champion, Billy Gunn and Tory Wilson were an item on screen. So if he's comparing Mike and Maria to Billy and Tory, this means one thing, motherfuckers. Maria and Mike's run together is going to culminate with a foursome. So we've got that to look forward to. That'll be nice. This time we have Jinder Mahal in the moment. He tried to say he sees the streets of America is full of xenophobia, but it came out xenophobia. This has worked out lovely for 2K18 and their 15th anniversary edition for John Cena's career because they have taken the scene enough thing, the thing that you always used to say back in the day when you were sick of John Cena winning every bastard night and put a positive spin on it. Which means we now have its rightful successor because if you are sick of seeing John Cena, you are suffering from xenophobia. 
a foreigner being liked. Now then, last night during WWE Smackdown Live, I was able to slip a camera up Vince McMahon's schneck and into his brain. Here is a live feed when my bear eye spirit animal Ruru was being cheered by that fan with the sign, which wasn't me, by the way. Here is the feed from inside Vince's brain when he saw that sight. The end is night, the end is night. F***ing run away, the end is night, night. Now then, are we sure that Chad Gable isn't in fact Kurt Angle's son, the moon salt, the ankle lock? In hell. It looks like when Kurt sprayed his milk towards Jason Jordan's mother, that Chad Gable's mother was sat just behind her and she was infected with it as well. It's the f***ing hat trick, it's Johnny Gable! <laughs> Tom Phillips asked when the last time we saw a man the size of Chad Gable, man handling my bear, my spirit animal, Rusev. And then JBL brings up Danny Hodge. What the f*** are you on about, you numpty? When the f***? Has Ruru and Danny Hodge ever done the grabs together? There's generations between the pair of them. Generations! Obviously, Tom was asking JBL, when was the last time we seen a little man like Chad take on a big man like Rusev? And JBL took that the wrong way and came out with a direct example when he perhaps shouldn't have. But it's my birthday. I want to enjoy myself. My bear, my spirit animal, Ruru, just knew that Randy Orton was coming out, but he didn't know when. Just look at the shock on his face there when his own music hit when he was seemingly only halfway through his own bastard promo. Surely a wrestler being frightened by their own theme is just the same as you or I, normal marks, getting frightened by our own bastard shadow. It simply shouldn't be happening. This obviously means one thing, motherfuckers. Dun, 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 Big Kev hit the wrong bastard button he was supposed to hit Randy Orton's theme, but played Ruru's again instead, causing Ruru's arsehole to fall out of his shorts. Why? Oh, you're sick of this now, aren't you? Here's why. Kevin Dunn fancies Vince McMahon so much that the sight of an evil foreigner getting cheered made his teeth crawl up and go into his own eyes. F***ing morons don't know that an RKO is named after Randy Orton's actual initials, do they? The f***ing marks. We all know it's Randy Canoodler Orton. <laughs> Here is my impression of you, marks. Oh, my God, why the f*** is Jinder Mahal WWE Champion? Oh, God. 25. Bong. Three what coaches signs? Thank you very much. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That exploder suplex and the fact that John Cena was able to walk and finish the match after it. WTF and f***ing hell. As we all know, I'm a veteran of the squared circle, therefore I know what happened here. Both men were at fault. Shinsky Nax didn't give Cena enough oomph on the way up, and Cena, presumably, thought he was going to take a back body drop rather than the flip and inverted exploder suplex was meant he under-rotated and landed on his bastard heed. Then, of course, because John Cena's John Cena, the bloody god of WWE, Nakamura had to show that he was apologising because it's John Cena. John Cena's never in the wrong. Of course, then John Cena accepted that apology, said quite clearly on camera, no need to apologise, pal. Which shows they were both at fault, in my opinion, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to turn around here and clap. And of course, we all know now that Jinder Mahal is absolutely f because Shinsky Nax won that match. No, it's not because he's going to lose his WWE Championship, which he should, by the way. I know it's so obvious, but Nakamura winning and Corbin immediately cashing in and taking the title from him is just what needs to happen. The reaction will be f***ing orgasmic. No, no, Jinder is f because this entire time he's been saying, I speak differently to you. That is why you boo. I look differently to you. That is why you boo. Now, Shinsky Nax, a man who was universally cheered to despite looking different to us Westerners and talking differently to us Westerners, it's just going to completely face f that logic right in the mouth. How does Jinder back up these claims now he's got someone stood opposite him who proves them completely and utterly wrong? I don't know. The moral of this story is, of course, the 80s want their outdated shtick back. Please give it to the WWE. Oh, gee, better get my hot take on my homies last my two subscribers on YouTube to enjoy. That's it. I'm going to get f now. Ta-da.